Hey everyone, Nasheda was here. Welcome to this video. In this video, let's keep talking about mind power. So mind power is a way to overcome cravings. That's the total opposite of using willpower. So instead of resisting a craving or guilting yourself into not smoking or pushing and struggling, which is what happens when you're using willpower, when you use mind power, you change your thinking so that you will not want to smoke in that moment. And this works because our thoughts cause our emotions. So by changing our thoughts, we change how we feel. So one way to use your mind power that comes from the cognitive behavioral quitting method. So one way to use your mind power to say no to smoking without struggling is to accept the craving thought. And I will explain exactly what I mean. So when we have a craving, whether it's a mental craving, that is a positive thought about smoking or whether it's a physical craving, what we tend to do is we tend to resist it and fight it and struggle with it. Well, accepting it, accepting that I'm having an experience that's a bit uncomfortable or an experience that's different from what I was feeling 10 minutes ago, accepting that there is a craving takes less energy from you. Resisting the craving takes way more energy. Accepting it takes less energy. And it also, when you accept the craving, it diminishes the power and the energy of that craving. So here's the thing. A craving is painful, not by itself. A craving, if it's a mental craving, if it's a craving thought, a thought is not painful. It's just a thought. A thought cannot hurt you, break you, or make you do anything. A thought is just a thought. And even if it's a physical craving, it's a sensation in your body. It's not painful. You have physical, as a smoker, you have physical cravings all day long because nicotine has a short half-life, which means that it quickly leaves your body. So even as a smoker, as you go throughout the day, as you go through the night, you have physical cravings all the time. You go through many withdrawals, but many times you don't even notice those cravings because the physical cravings is not painful. So why? Why do we have so much pain and struggle and despair associated with cravings? Well, it's not the craving itself that's painful. It's the story we tell ourselves about what this craving means. So having a craving thought like, I need a cigarette to relax right now, this craving at face value is nothing. It has no power over you. But what makes you struggle is the story you tell yourself, the catastrophizing that happens. Like if I don't smoke, I will be stressed and then I will lash out to my family and my colleagues and I will get fired and I will have uh, an anxiety attack and I will we worry and catastrophize about all the horrible things, the story of what will happen if we don't smoke. So that's what makes a craving overwhelming and that's what convinces smoke. But when you accept that craving thought as just a thought or as just a sensation in your body and you don't try to fight it or resist it or judge it as good or bad, then immediately you step out of this storytelling of the craving mind. You're able to not be seduced by the story of what the craving mind is telling you. So a craving means nothing. It's just a reminder of a situation where you used to smoke or it's a reminder that nicotine is leaving your body if it's a physical craving. We have trained ourselves to believe everything we think, but this is not the case. A thought about smoking is a thought like any other thought, the thousands of thoughts you have every day. So what helps to accept the craving instead of fighting it is to avoid labeling it. So that's one. So treat it like any, uh, not to say, oh, this is a good thing or a bad thing. It's just information. It's just a response to a trigger. It's just a response to the natural process of nicotine leaving my body, which happens during the first five days after you're nicotine free. It's just information. It's just that. It's not good. It's not bad. It's not a story. It's nothing. It's something that will come and it will go away it will not stay. If you're feeling that the craving will stay forever, then it means you have entered the story of the craving mind. 
because that's one thing that it tells you that it's never going to go away. You're never going to feel good. But of course, that's not the case. So it's just a craving is just information and see it. See the craving and the emotion that comes with it, the wanting, everything. See it as a visitor that's passing through you and allow it to do so. Don't try to grasp that craving thought. Don't try to entertain the thought of smoking or picture yourself taking the first puff and feeling relief. All this is entertaining, entering the story of the craving mind. Just see it as a thought that's passing through you and allow it to do so. Because the nature of any experience of any thought, of any emotion, is to just pass through you. If a craving or a thought or a, or, a, or a negative thinking loop remains, it's because we try to hold on to it. We involve our mind into it. If we don't and we just accept that it's passing through, it will go away. Because a, a str the strength of any experience, of any thought, is determined by the power you give it to it. So if you give it no power and you allow it to go away, it will. A great exercise is to imagine, let's say, that you are on a beach, a beautiful beach that has nice sand and the waves are rhythmically moving. It's calm. It's beautiful. And you are there and everything you're thinking about, whether it's a sentence in your mind's eye, whether it's something you hear in your self-talk, whether it's an image, in any way your thoughts present themselves to you. So imagine that you see those thoughts on the sand. So if you're thinking, I need a cigarette right now, see that sentence written in the sand. If you're visualizing and you're thinking of yourself uh, feeling stressed and it's an image, see that image in, drawn in the sand and allow the wave to come and dissolve that image with the sand. And if that image or that thought comes back, again, let it be on the sand and the wave will come and wash it away and do that again and again. because. The nature of your thoughts is to come and go. All you have to do is just let them. Thoughts, experiences, nothing. A craving cannot hurt you. What can hurt you is the stories you tell yourself and then acting upon those stories. So a craving has no power over you. So that is how, that is one way you can use mindfulness, which is a form of using your mind power to uh, overcome craving thoughts. So I know this is a bit different than what I usually share, or it's a bit controversial or a, just a different way to overcome cravings, but it's really, really, really powerful because we live in a world and in a culture where we don't want to feel anything that's not pleasant. And part of the human experience is having all kinds of emotions. Doesn't mean they're negative. Emotions are information. So allow yourself to feel those things. And if you just accept that they're passing through and allow them to do so, they will not uh, do anything to you. And you will see that they will actually pass really, really, really quickly and you will feel fine. Nothing will happen. So I hope this was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about using mindfulness, if you like the, the exercise about the sand and the waves washing away your thoughts and mental images. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.